how did this work out? We just flew a hundred miles over the Amazon rainforest in a cargo plane, became best friends with the Capitan of an indigenous community, then ate, hunted, and lived with him and his wife in the basement of a church. <laughs> it was one of the most transformative weeks of my life. You know, I've never been so grateful to have been able to experience something like this. It wasn't just because of the novelty, you know, the differences or the discomfort. It was because of one man named Juan who shared his life with us. He changed our lives so much by giving us a deep understanding of his culture, his being, and his state of mind. remember the episode where I meditated for 10 hours with my friend, then you'll probably remember Patrick. Patrick's an actor, and together we're shooting a film in Colombia right now. One of the scenes takes place in the Amazon, which is why, as of this morning, we've made it to the southernmost drivable part of the eastern Colombian Amazon, San Jose del Guaviare. All right, so we need to get to the Amazon, and there's a ton of cargo ships that are already heading there. So we're going to go down to the port and see if any of them will let us hitch a ride with them and go to the Amazon for free. So somehow the people who owned the ships actually were down to let us hitchhike. <laughs> the problem was that they didn't set sail for another week. Luckily, we got some sick footage on all of the ships. If we can't take a boat, the only other option is a plane. I'm gonna head to the airport tomorrow morning and ask around uh, and see if there's any flights headed to the Amazon. All right, is it recording? Okay, so I just went to the airport, which is such a small airport that there was just a table with all of the pilots having breakfast together. So I just went up to them and I was like, um, you know, hey, is there a flight to the Amazon sometime soon? And they're like, yeah, yeah, they, they like wrote it out all on paper, how much each flight cost and all that. And there was one that we could afford heading to the Amazon and it leaves in an hour and a half. <laughs> so I was like, deuda, say less. Um, came back here real quick, we're gonna pack up everything, try and withdraw out enough cash to buy this flight because they don't even accept card, they only accept cash, we don't even have enough. And then board this plane to the Amazon. <laughs> We did it. We actually did it. <laughs> we made it to this little pueblito called Karuru last night. We met a guy who says he has a boat and can take us to a, uh, an indigenous community. We got that at 5 a.m. Gonna get a little Amazonian River sunrise cruise. Okay, so here's the thing, you know, we pull up to this indigenous community as the first white people that have ever been there. The first thing that the Capitan sees on me is this huge cinema camera around my neck. So obviously he asked me, what are you doing here? He asked me, is this an investigation? You know, it would have been not the right move to just immediately start pointing this camera in his face and start filming. So because of that, I didn't record any of the conversations of meeting the community for the first time. What changed though, and what made them not worried about us being there, was when he asked me why I'm here. I told him that we just wanted to learn about the culture in Colombia, 
and that we'd be missing out if we didn't stay in a house in, in the Amazon. And as soon as I said that, you know, he got so excited to show me everything. The moment that I told him that we were interested in learning, in just learning, something switched in his personality and he became ecstatic. He took us on this huge tour around his community and pointed at every single tree and everything that he could show us. He was saying, do you want to try armadillo? Do you want to try capybara? He was taking us to all of his neighbors, introducing us, and then he took us into the jungle where our first day there at six in the morning, we hike 30 kilometers out and back in the Amazon rainforest. I've never met anyone that had like that same attitude. And it was cool just to be like with him, you know. I feel like through osmosis I was also kind of approaching life the same way. life-changing weeks of my life was first living in a temple of monks and second living in an Amazonian family's home and honestly I think it's because what we were doing was normal just someone else is normal here we're not going on a safari we're not going on a boat tour or staying in one of the resorts that exist in the Amazon we're just we're just chilling with Juan we're learning that in Desano they call the Sun and the moon the same word they also have the same word for man and earth. The vertebrae of a capybara is my favorite part, and fried cassabe or anunye is our new favorite food in the world. We hunt when they hunt, we fish when they fish, and we play when they play. It's a strange feeling when most of your life is set towards accomplishing something. And then you get to remove everything that you're doing in your life and all of a sudden, it feels so much more rich and so much more meaningful. Like that's a weird experience to have when you're young because when you're young growing up inside of like American modernity, everything is supposed to be towards accomplishing some sort of difficult endeavor to put your life in a better place than it currently is. And then you go somewhere like that and think, wow, at least for me, this is more more fruitful than anything I've ever done. In the removal of all of created modernity, a fundamental way of life is found, one of purpose. And you know, I guess that's really what this comes back to, it's purpose. I'll use the term American modernity to say that in such a state of modern society, most of our time is spent as a vague means to something else. But here, everything is just purpose. We catch fish to have fish. We clean our clothes to have clean clothes. You know, we hike to find fruit. We play for the sake of play. Nothing else. It's just, it's hard for me to imagine that this life isn't better in every single way. The people here are happier. There's no question about it. In modern society on a normal day, I'll sleep in as long as I can unless I have something to do first thing in the morning. But here, we'd wake up early just to be awake. The keel of culture, the state of mind which carries and balances it, is that serious jest, that formal jive, which resembles energetic play, resembles sport. Understanding sport to mean an effort which in contradistinction to work is not imposed upon us, not utilitarian or paid for, but a spontaneous luxury effort that we make for the pleasure of making it, an effort that takes pleasure in itself. As Goth said, the song that the throat sings is the perfect prize for him who sings it. Uh, 
gloria de Jehová cayó en el Sinaí. Aquel monte temblaba porque Dios estaba ahí. Gloria de Jehová cayó en el Sinaí. Aquel monte temblaba porque Dios estaba ahí. Dios estaba ahí. Dios estaba ahí. El monte temblaba porque Dios estaba ahí. Dios estaba ahí. Dios estaba ahí. Aquel monte temblaba porque Dios estaba ahí. Perhaps we just don't understand the meaning of the word addition. The more you add to a plate of food, a region of land, or a story, the less you'll be able to notice what was originally there. And normally what was originally there is what was intended. So what was the intended life? What was the fundamental human experience that we lost beneath the ingredients? Completeness. To completely realize that this is life. My breath, the beat of my heart, it was the same in Italy as it was in America and in the Amazon. To wake up just to be awake, we come across an awareness that fascinates us with simple being. It's funny that just like Zeno's paradox, addition always progresses us further and further, and yet we never reach the whole. Wrapped in the constrictions of modernity, we found ourselves born with amnesia, having already forgotten that life was complete to begin with. It's like one big joke for a 19-year-old American. All that striving, all that wanting things to be different. Just to live without it all and find completeness. You know, it's like you become enamored with just being, nothing else. And then if you're all right with just the experience of living, then everything else on top of that is this addition that makes it feel like it's such a privilege to be able to eat this beer. It's such a great opportunity to be able to be talking with this person. Everything feels like it's this amazing opportunity. And that's only because you're all right with being on that ground state. And that's what I learned from, I guess, spending time with an Amazonian family was learning how to be that deeply involved with just the experience of living. I like my laptop set up in the Amazon.